factory tours. These have shown us some of the biggest, most complex, and at times most dangerous environments we've ever seen. This is the GN Factory Tour Series. We've already seen painting factories, anodizing factories, water block manufacturing facilities, and case manufacturing plants. This never before seen footage from one of our previous trips takes us to an electrophoretic deposition factory in Taiwan. It's the very same one used by Li and Li and by certain air cooler manufacturers, despite the lack of beige color inventory. Electro deposition is one of the many options for product coating available alongside automated painting factories that produce brilliant metallic blue side panels like this Li and Li one, electroplating factories that chemically bathe and zap PC parts with color, and anodization factories. Unlike all of these others, the difference with electrophoretic deposition is that I don't know what that means. So we'll need to tour this factory and talk with its owners, engineers, and customers like Li and Li to learn how it works. Let's get started. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now and we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. Lian Lee told us that its anodization factory costs the most, with painting factories the second most and electroplating following that. Electro deposition is the cheapest of all these options for coating a product with color, but still effective. For today's tour, the factory will be coating products in black, the factory said that it's capable of all manner of beautiful and complex colors, speaking passionately about its available options, but that black is the only color it keeps in supply, including 10 tons ready in the tanks right now. We asked why the black coloring was so popular, and after a pause, rather than speaking through translation, we got a one-word English answer from our tour guide. Marketing. Everybody knows it. This is a factory that's in touch with PC hardware makers. Now, if only they could figure out how to electrophoretically depose RGB LEDs onto metal side panels. Lian Li tells us that chassis interior components like painted motherboard trays are commonly taken to electro deposition plants. The parts don't need to be as beautified as an externally visible panel. So something like a white motherboard tray or a black motherboard tray might be done at this specific facility instead of one of the more expensive ones that's reserved for chassis exterior components. There's a place in manufacturing for all of these approaches, and it's important to maximize the quality of the product and sometimes minimize the cost by mixing and matching the solutions correctly. This particular factory is named Ding Shan Qi Ye Xian Gong Si, and it's commonly used for coating products with thin, affordable coloring. For products like heat sinks, this coating is also desirable in part because it's more limited in its impact on cooling performance. So it's both cheaper and more appropriate for the product in functionality. Way back in March of 2020, we actually ended up making two trips to this factory. During the first visit, we were disallowed from seeing the actual ED coating part of the process, and we were prohibited from seeing or filming the most advanced, interesting machinery. Within a few minutes of leaving, the factory called us back and said that after asking the higher ups, they wanted to show us everything. We made the trip back to learn more. And that was over a year ago, and now we're ready to show you how it's made. Now that's, that's probably trademarked. We'll show you how stuff works, also trademarked. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna show you a factory in great detail. As we get into this, a quick reminder that we have a factory tour playlist linked in the description below, where we have over 20 factory tours of computer hardware facilities. Check it out after this video. Initially, our host Lian Li told us that this factory was an electric chisel factory, but we later learned that this may have been a translation issue. This factory does electrophoretic deposition, or EPD, and specializes in cathodic electrodeposition. Here's what EPD actually is. EPD is the same basic idea as electroplating, another process that we filmed at a different factory. Pigment is dissolved in a solution, two electrodes are then placed into the solution, and one of those is the part to be coated. At this point, an electric current is passed through. We asked what the voltage and the current was, and the answer was, you die. 
So we weighed our options and decided today wasn't the day to slip and fall into the tanks while traversing the narrow, slippery sheet metal upper decks suspended between the lines. They could probably save money if they used gigabyte power supplies to fuel these with that current instead. <laughs> the charge of the pigment particles causes them to be attracted to the part to be coated. The process can be configured with the part to be coated forming either the anode or the cathode. EPD is much more versatile than electroplating, since any electrically conductive surface can be coated and any particle that can hold a charge and form a stable solution can be used for the coating. Once the part is coated, it's lifted through a tunnel and rinsed with pure water nozzles to clean off the loose pigment and fluid from the bath. There's some waste reclamation here, as any of the unused pigment can be filtered and reused. Lee and Lee representatives noted that in addition to being cheaper, EPD results in a smoother coating than anodization, which has some advantages, like making a better surface for gluing or taping side panel frames to tempered glass, for example. This factory is just one giant ceiling mounted conveyor belt inside of a steel building. There's a well lit area for manual work up front, but the rest of it happens in the dark with only machines. It's an automated line, so humans don't need to do much other than feed the conveyor belt, and they don't need to go back to the section where all of this is happening. The line takes exactly 84 minutes to rotate completely through, so there's a very predictable time requirement for a product to be cleaned, painted, and ultimately baked. The factory told us that it's a very precise timing and almost never changes. Every single stage is known, as well as how many minutes each stage is. We asked what kind of math was involved to figure out all this complex timing of the 84 minute run. And we got another one word English answer and a laugh. Experience, or in other words, trial and error. The first step of this factory is to use manual labor to mount components to racks that'll go through the entire conveyor belt system. If you thought mounting a cooler to a motherboard was painful, try basically building one fin by fin like this guy is doing. He's mounting each fin of a well-known cooler brown brand rather, so that the fins get coated black for blackout models of popular coolers. Before any painting starts though, the racks have to be sandblasted so that they can be reused. The hainers also end up getting painted when they go through this process, and that's why they have to be blasted to avoid cross-contamination with other products. For that, Ding Sheng uses a custom-made imposing sandblasting machine. If you're not clear on how a sandblaster works, this guy's arm motions explain it about as well as any words can. After nine minutes in the sandblaster, sand, as it often does in life, finds its way into every crack and hole inside the machine, which uses 300 kilograms of sand for the process. The sand is mostly reclaimed and reused, especially the larger granules that end up in a filtered collection tray. All of the dust, sand, and paint particles get sucked up through the ventilation during the process and exhausted and filtered elsewhere. The machine only costs about twenty to $30,000, which is actually shockingly cheap as far as specialized factory equipment goes. The factory's owner actually designed large aspects of it, and his experience in tools engineering, we're told, is what keeps the company lean and effective. Back to the hangers. Each hook is loaded with up to 30 kilograms of products and carried into the foreboding tunnel. The tunnel rounds the corner and involves multiple partitions of cleaning with water and chemicals. These partitions exist in order to isolate the water from chemical spray which allows reuse and better filtering to comply with Taiwan's strict environmental standards. The water sprayer's liquid flows to the tanks below the tunnel. Most water is filtered and reused, particularly towards the end of the process, while the water used earliest in the process requires more filtration and more frequent changing because it's spraying off the dirt from metal and manufacturing plants. If you've seen our other factory tours of those metalworking and tooling plants, it's clear that nothing escapes these locations without an ample coating of metallic powder and metal shards. 
That's why the EPD coating factory has to do all this cleaning beforehand. Most of these coating factories use a lot of water, so dry seasons can cause serious production slowdowns, but Taiwan is often benefited by typhoons to help with that. As the products are carried out of the cleansing tunnel, they're hit with air compressors to help remove the dust, and then the racks drip dry while moving towards the coating bin. A final coating of a phosphate solution makes the electro deposition coating easier to attach thanks to a chemical reaction with the surface. There are a lot of large pipes on the floor of this place, at the tub base especially, that carry the electro deposition coating fluid, and the machines can actually stack or expand on the rails further into the room based on how much fluid is left in each tank for the day. One's the reserve while the other is the primary for the day, but it's an impressive process to see them shifting around. Time to get into some technical details, although they've passed through a few translation layers, just to be clear. This particular set of tubs is electrified at 60 to 200 volts, depending on the product, and 80 to 100 amps. The coating is positive and the rest is negative, so the coat bonds with the material. We're told that thicker products need higher voltage to fully coat the device, that's where the 200 volts would come in, whereas thinner products can use less. The products are dragged through the tank and products with small crevices need to be manually pushed around or wobbled to degas the product and dislodge air bubbles that might cause coating imperfections. The entire coating process takes about 90 seconds, followed by a 30 minute oven process. As for the solution, these tanks are 85% water and the paint fluid is 100% reusable. Any excess paint or paint drip is captured and it's then filtered and restored and reused so that it reduces the cost and doesn't pollute the water. As for waste water, that's filtered through a similar filtering machine that we saw in other factories, where the liquid is squished using an air compressor and a press, forcing out the water and isolating the, well, very toxic smelling, but technically reusable, or at least consolidated and landfillable materials. The water contaminants are primarily from dust or debris accumulated in the supplier factory beforehand, and any paint that isn't used in this process can be sucked back out and pumped back into the tanks for reuse later. The painting tubes are hooked up to a large green box that's effectively a pump, and there's also effectively a dual chamber reservoir of paint and water connected via hoses. The pump and the cooling solution need to be kept at a cool 26 to 28 degrees Celsius in order to prevent coagulation within the tubing. As for the tank, that's the interesting part. It uses radiator looking anode diaphragms, at least according to translation, on each end of the tank. The anode diaphragms help even out the distribution of electricity through the tank and through the product, and as the product is dipped into the coating, it sparkles from the current that gets passed through it. On the way out of the paint tank, the product is sprayed by misting of water to help stabilize the paint, but we weren't allowed to get a close up of the backside of this machine for competitive reasons. Time to bake up some computer parts. The next step is this giant overhead oven. The oven's temperature depends on how thick the product is, but it ranges from 180 to 200 degrees Celsius. The factory runs products for nine minutes below 100 degrees because jumping straight to 200 would destroy the chemical coating, and walking beneath the oven reveals power modules that are lodged into the ceiling for heating. This is probably the final resting place of GTX 480s if they ever need additional help heating things up. The oven uses a mix of gas and electricity to heat efficiently and have finer control over the temperature. The oven's about 22 meters long and it requires 30 minutes to advance through. And now the obvious of waste discussion. All of these factories produce enormous waste in the process of making the products that we buy for our computers. Some of the factories, particularly those in Taiwan or Taipei especially, have stricter standards for how to deal with waste. But there's still a lot of it, and more can always be done to improve the process. As for all the filtering, that mostly takes place outside. Incoming water is distilled as it enters the facility, a required step to ensure water quality. We're told that reverse osmosis is used in the filtering process, and that it's cheaper to distill the water at the factory than to buy it in the volume required. This factory has 20 tons of water on site at all times. And when you consider multiple competing factories exist as well, it brings a new perspective to how critical just the water supply is for production of computer parts. And this is only for the metal in some of the parts. This outside area also houses all of the natural gas tanks. These are used for heating the oven in combination with the electric heater. 
Every now and then, the Taiwanese government throws a nice party for this factory called a surprise water quality checking party. To meet other government compliance, the factory has to accumulate its waste and debris from products to eventually deliver to a government agency. It can't dispose of it anywhere else. This particular factory, because of the process of EPD, produces relatively low waste in comparison to something like a standard painting factory, where you've got robotic arms spraying paint all over the place. The factory's been open for five years, and it still hasn't accumulated enough waste to pass off and meet the Taiwan threshold, so it's just filling bag after bag until the time comes. As for seeing all this in real life, you might actually have something that came from this factory in your own build. In the instance of tower coolers going through the process, the cold plate would be protected from being painted, and it gets nickel plated by a different factory but the fins are done here. The metal part of the tempered glass panels on the Lianli O11 Dynamic also use this EPD process, and some of those materials can come through this factory, as do the motherboard trays, by the way, allowing for a cheaper solution for a less commonly seen part. To see more of this, check out our other factory tours in the factory tour series to learn about anodization with PC parts, painting, metal processing, heat pipe manufacturing, that one's really cool, and even the manufacturing of AMD stock coolers at Cooler Master's factory. We'll link all of that below. To help us pay for more tours like this in the future, visit store.gamersnexus.net for shirts, mod mats, and our new red and black mouse pads. Or visit patreon.com slash gamersnexus for behind the scenes content. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more, and we'll see you all next time.